Namaste. Good morning, Amma. Namaste. Good morning. Can you please tell us your name and, and something about yourself and how you came to come to Devi Puram? Okay. Okay, it's my pleasure. Um, my name is Kanmuri Satyavati Devi. My husband's name was Kanmuri Prem Sagar. Now he's no more. In uh, 1986, I used to feel a void in my life. You know, I was, I used to feel I'm living for nothing. That sort of a feeling went more and more deep. And I felt I should end my life. There's no use of living. And at that juncture, I met Sundari ji, Guruji's sister-in-law in Bombay. The moment I met her and saw her, some pull was there. So I was hoping to make uh, more intimate friends with her and interact with her. And I got the chance through another friend of mine, Kameshwari. We had a satsang there and in the first satsang itself, I felt, oh, this is what I need and this is what I wanted. And from then onwards, there's no looking back. I used to attend all her satsangs and I learnt a lot, lot, lot from them. Then one day I wanted to call her to my house on September 3rd, 1987 for a satsang. She said, okay. And then Guruji was to come suddenly, there was a message. She said, Amma, I'm sorry, if Guruji is there, I, the program is not in my hands. I felt very disappointed because at that time I was not into all Gurus or such things, such people. So I said, okay, and at home, I went home and I started crying. I said, I want you to do something good, and why this obstacle? So I cried, cried, my heart's are content. And then I went to my neighbor's house, and from there I got a phone the next day that, uh, Amma, there is a satsang in your house, Guruji is also coming. So the reaction to Guruji coming was not there. I was happy, Sundariji is coming, and I'm going to do something very good and divine in my house. The day came, they arrived, I called all the people whom I knew, the house was full and uh, they were, as they were coming up, I went to welcome them down. As soon as I saw, saw Sundariji, I embraced her, I thanked her for coming and then realized that Guruji and Amma are down coming up. I called them, Rand Amma Randi, Namaste and all that and the look Guruji gave. At that time, I didn't know, but after the satsang was over, he gave us, uh, after many, most of the people left, there, was, there were only a few of us, and uh, he was giving diksha. He gave all the mantras, and then uh, Sundariji wrote that uh, in the Sanskrit, as I didn't know to read Telugu. <coughs> and from that day onwards, Believe me, whichever puja I did, I went into my shrine, I wanted to do Ganpati puja, I saw Guruji's face. I wanted to do Lakshmi puja, I saw Guruji's face. Whichever deity I wanted to do or uh, think of, it was Guruji's face. And that time I didn't realize the depth. But today I can say he is Guru, as they say, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, he proved it to me by showing whomever I think his face. So he has that strength and from that day my life was, my graph was up, never looking back at anything. There were so many things coming, obstacles, but they all, you know, you didn't feel that they were a big burden. Everything went on smoothly. I used to follow what all he says as far as I could and try to do and practice all the pujas, but I was very busy at the at that juncture, looking after the family and so many other things. But still I wanted to do. As I didn't know Telugu and Guruji's pujas were all in Telugu, I used to sit and cry. I can't do these things, I can't know these things, I, and I don't have time to do. Then it was uh, Haranaya who came, and he used to give me the books in English. So whatever I could do, I started doing. 
and uh, even for reading Lalita Sahasranamam uh, in Sundari ji's uh, satsangs, first we used to read uh, Lalita Sahasranamam and then she used to give us a lecture. So that also I could not read because in English the pronunciation would not come good and I was edu educated in the medium of instruction was uh, English, Telugu I did not know, Sanskrit was also so so, I just to pass my and not Sanskrit sorry Hindi, just to pass school I had the knowledge after that no practice. So I could not read any language perfectly to read uh, Lalita Sasrama. So when I used to go to the satsangs, I used to sit and cry, you know I cannot read but that energy used to pass through me. And one day we collected some money for the constru construction of the temple and I sent the draft to Guruji and in the reply to the letter as if he read my mind, he wrote to me many things. It is a I mean it is a one page letter front and back but it is a bible for me now as you say in English it is a bible or it is a Bhagavad Gita for me. I stored that letter got it uh, laminated in that he mentioned Amma read every day one line of Lalita Sasana and imbibe those qualities into you the whole day that same line trying to know the meaning and imbibe those qualities. That helped me a lot. Soon one year was over, 365 lines, so one year was over, I was quite well versed with Lalita Sasadama. And uh, most of the pujas I did do, but I was more inquisitive as to what is behind the puja. Yes, this is a ritual fine to let our concentration develop. But I said why is this puja to be done, what, should, what are we going to gain through it? That was my questionnaire and I used to get the answers from him or Sundari ji or some other friend or some book. So the real tattva of the puja I used to try and inculcate into myself. So then I felt there is no need of taking all the things and ingredients and doing the puja. I could do it mentally with myself. And another thing Guruji is, uh, used to keep saying when anyone used to talk to him or ask for a Sri Chakra, when I asked for a Sri Chakra, then he said, Amma, you yourself are the Sri Chakra. Any time, three, four times I asked him, it was the same answer. So I thought at that juncture, I thought maybe I am not qualified to do the puja or to have hold a Sri Chakra. But then I kept asking myself, why does he say this? There must be something to it. So I went on thinking and uh, he taught us Shat Chakra Japam. I, when I started doing that, one day suddenly I was in the temple, the middle of the temple, Meru my temple in Devipuram. My head was at the Sahasrakshi Bindu place and my body was the whole temple. And I saw many people sitting and reciting things, I do not remember what. So <clears throat> then I went on meditating on that and I realized why did he say, so our body is a Sri Chakra. So even while doing puja he used to keep saying the cosmos, the yantra, the devi and you and the articles of puja have to become one. So that I got the realization. So in such a way, you know, whenever I used to put some question to myself for my upliftment, I used to get answers. Such is his compassion. And uh, in 2001, my husband retired and we started coming to Devipura more often and I, we could, I, I mean both of us could watch Guruji and Amma very closely, oh my God, still I am 67 now, I have to still see people like that, they are unique. So our lives were really divine after meeting them and he initiated uh, us into the Purnadiksha and from that time 
it was really Shiva and Shakti. It was not Mr. Prem Sagar and Satyavati together. We were Shiva and Shakti. So we gained a lot. Our lives are divine. And my children also follow him. They all, we all love him, them very much. And Amma is a totally different person. It's very difficult to understand her. But she is the compassion behind him. She is the strength behind him. You know, and she loves her children, so she doesn't want them to do any mistake. And especially in the Kavala Marga Tantric way, she's scared her children will go astray. So she puts some boundaries which usually the devotees misunderstand. That why is she doing this? But if you really think, you know why she will do it. Why is she doing it? It is for our good and for our upliftment. Because if we are not ready and you practice, you go astray. That she doesn't want. A true mother's love. And um, once I had a dream. Um, I was not, I had not seen Devi Puram by that time. It was before uh, 1990, say 88 or 89 perhaps. Uh, I had a dream. I was somewhere in some jungle. And uh, Sundariji and many of my friends, we were all together. Everyone is uh, looking into one direction. And I was uh, in a sort of a cave inside. And I saw Amma. Uh, Anakapili Guruji was there. And he was dressing her up like a bride. And Guruji was sitting on the opposite side, where there was uh, some puja uh, mandir, sort of a small mandir sort of a thing. And I was looking and I said, why is, who is he? Why is he decorating Amma like that? I had that question. The moment I had that question, Amma just jumped from this side to that side and came to Guruji's side. And uh, I still have to uncover that mystery. And I just did Namaste and I went up and I saw all my friends looking into one direction. I said, what is it? What are you looking at? I said, I asked Sundariji was standing beside me. I said, Sundari Amma, what are you looking at? She said, now Shiva and Parvati are going to come dance. They are going to come and dance. So I said, oh, and even I started looking very intently to that, uh, from that direction, on that direction. And I saw a vision. I mean, it was true. I, I don't know. I can't see it's a vision. I saw Guruji and Amma. Guruji as Shiva and Amma as uh, Parvati. Uh, then I understood maybe at this juncture, suddenly now I, uh, it dawned on me that, oh, Ankapili Guruji I was dressing her as a bride for the dance. So they came dancing in the clouds. And uh, it was terrific. That scene was really, I still cannot forget it, but I can't explain the beauty of it. And then I understood, yeah, they are Shiva and Parvati, are Shiva and Shakti in person, in the human form. Thank you, that was very beautiful. So many yeah. other um, experiences, you know. Mm. Right at the moment, it's difficult to remember. But the life has completely changed. So much so that even now, when my husband expired in July, after the Guru Purnima, I was calm and composed. It was a sudden, he was fine, but it was a sudden death. But still, uh, it didn't perturb me. That was the training of Guruji. He elevated me to that extent. So what else um, a person can lose than a loving husband? Not more. But still, I am able to manage very well and elevate myself more and more. He has given the whole well of knowledge. It is for us to dig out one by one, one by one and pick up what is necessary at that moment for us. So we need, I mean, you just think of him 
and it strikes you. That's my experience, there are many more, but it's difficult to see it in just a nutshell and in a few minutes. Okay, that's very, very, very nice stories. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can you tell us? Um, you told us about Guruji and Amma in such a beautiful way. Can you tell us something about Devi Puram itself, your experience there, and why why you were drawn to stay there and 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 come there on a regular basis? Not only because our, our gurus are there, but the, the Devi Puram itself. What does that mean yeah. for you? It's a very powerful place, very divine, unique. Uh, even if anyone would go and see, you will find that it's not a temple. There is no temple of that kind, this kind, anywhere in the world so far. Sri Chakram, Sri Yantra is being worshipped. But in the Meru form, this is the only kind. That's one thing. And uh, the deities are also unique. They are the Khadgamala deities. Uh, the names of the deities suggest the passions, emotions within us. You sit there and worship and uh, if you concentrate, with, when you sit near, suppose, say, Anima Siddhi, and you concentrate on that part of your body and recite Khadgamala, Lalita Sahasranamam, or any sort of uh, recitation, or just do Mantra Japam, immediately that part will be awakened. So when you complete and go to the go to Sahasrakshi, uh, doing this on each and every deity, sitting near each and de every deity, you feel you are charged to the maximum. You know, the whole body starts vibrating and every cell in you is activated. And perhaps uh, the Kundalini also rises. At that time, I didn't experience, but other some other time, when I was doing my Japam, I had that experience. Doing this puja, sitting near every deity, is a wonderful way to transform yourself. But you have to understand the meaning of the deity's name. And Rupam you are seeing. You can touch, feel, feel they are very life, full of life. And the energy that flows through their eyes is tremendous. That's uh, because I wanted to transform myself. My aim, uh, basically, to come into the spiritual field is to for self-realization. Uh, material gains are the byproducts of that. When you aim for the self-realization, all the other things don't matter really. But you are, you get it, and you automatically get without even asking whatever you need. So that's was that is, and uh, uh, when actually we started coming, there were no many people. Guruji Amma used, uh, used to do everything. And the love and compassion we got and the homely feeling we got when we used to go there, we felt we should uh, now at least come and help them take care of the place to whatever way, in a little way we can. Otherwise, you learn from your parents and you desert them, the greatest sin anybody can do. So I felt like that. I said, they are my spiritual parents. So we have a duty towards them. Both of us, both my husband and myself felt the same. And we asked Guruji, Guruji, we want to come and stay here. There were some of you little more responsibilities. You said you complete your responsibilities and come. So that is how we used to come and stay and do whatever little we can to help them. And then now there are so many people. Today you can go and see. Thank it's you. growing, it's yes. growing. If anyone wants to aspire for self-realization and know who you are, I would suggest Devi Puram in its earnest way.